Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. A couple of months ago I did a video about off-grid communications, stuff that you can use when you lose power and internet and phone. And in that video we talked about amateur radio, of course. I do have an amateur radio license. My call sign is KC1RGS. We talked about Starlink and we also talked about using some of those smartphone to satellite features that are on the iPhone and a few of the Android phones out there. But a lot of you wrote in to say, well, what about Meshtastic? And I hadn't played with Meshtastic yet, but I now have. And I found some really simple, relatively easy, and very inexpensive solutions to get started with your own Meshtastic nodes. And I want to credit two fellow creators. One is Josh from Ham Radio Crash Course, who turned me on to all of this hardware. And I'm going to point you at his video because he does a great step-by-step -step for getting everything set up and all the parts that you need, and I want to make sure he gets the credit for this. And I also want to thank my friend Steve, KM9G, who has the temporary offline ham radio YouTube channel, who's also been nudging me to check out some of this Meshtastic stuff. Now, what's neat about Meshtastic is that it allows you to send text messages using these little circuit boards here over fairly long distances uh, without the need for any infrastructure or any kind of license because it does work over bands that you don't need a license for here in the United States. It's growing in popularity. Unfortunately, in my area, nobody else is using it but me, but I did end up buying a three-pack of these little Helltech V3 boards here, so that was enough to allow me to at least talk to myself and maybe toss one to a friend or something. So it is a fun project if you wanted to get into Meshtastic, and it's a lot easier now to set everything up. I think the software has matured quite a bit. The hardware is very easy to get started with, and what I've done is I've built one of these Helltech V3s into this case with a battery, and I haven't configured this yet, so we'll get it up and running with my Android phone, and I'll talk to myself on it and show you how it works. I also want to talk about the end of the video about why, if you're into this, you might want to consider getting an amateur radio license. The technician licenses are not hard to get. If you're able to set this thing up and use it, I think you can pass the test. And what you can do with an amateur radio license is communicate over much larger distances, and there are a lot more people to communicate with especially on the APRS data mode. So we'll talk about that towards the end of the video here. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for everything in this video with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this video, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see how this beginner can play with some Meshtastic. Now, all you really need to play with Meshtastic is one of these cheap Helltech V3 boards. I got three of these for 60 bucks, $20 each, and they come with antennas. And that's really all you need as long as you've got USB power going to it to boot it up. Now what I also did from Josh's video over at Ham Radio Crash Course is pick up one of these 3D printed cases from Zero Fox 3D. And in here is one of these Helltech boards along with a battery. And the antenna sticks out here on the top. And Josh uh, assembled this on his channel so you can see how the whole thing comes together. So definitely check out his channel again to get the lowdown on that. So what we're going to do first though is get the firmware onto this device. And so what I'm gonna do is just plug it in to my Mac here and get started. Now, what's really cool about Meshtastic is that the firmware is really easy to flash. So what I'm gonna do here is plug this in and the device here is going to boot up and get itself ready to be flashed. And on the Meshtastic website, they have a, a little thing called the flasher. So if you go to flasher.meshtastic.org, it is point and click, so I can select a target device. I do want to look for that Helltech V3 on the list here. So I'll just do a quick search. And this is the one I want, the Helltech V3. We're going to do the most recent stable beta. And they continually update things, so it is going to be kind of a work in progress here. But we will go with the stable one. And then I'm going to click on Flash. Now what I'll get here is a couple of warnings about uh, things to be aware of, nothing to be worried about because you can always reflash later if things don't go right. I'm going to just go ahead here and go with the defaults and click on update. I will have this come up here. I'm going to select uh, this, the CP2202 USB to UART bridge. That's the uh, serial port that we want to connect to. I'll click connect here and that is it for flashing. So it does take a few minutes to get everything flashed on. These are cheap little $20 boards after all. But when this is done, uh, we will have ourselves a Meshtastic node that is ready to get connected. So let's let that finish flashing. I'll get my Android phone out here and pair it up, and then we will communicate via Meshtastic. 
All right, so the firmware is done here and it's instructing us to connect to a phone to get the rest of it set up. On Android and on iOS, they have a Meshtastic app. It looks a little different on each platform. What we'll do is talk between an iPhone and an Android phone via our Meshtastic nodes here to show you the differences. But what I'm gonna do is go into the settings, hit the plus button here, and connect to the Meshtastic device here. And it's got a code up on screen, 97810, just to make sure we get the right pairing. And that's going to pair this device with this phone, and it, pin it pairs up over Bluetooth. So we'll click on OK here, and we'll give it a second to come up and uh, get operating. So it looks like we are paired up now, and we are connected. So now what it's doing is going through all of its basic configuration here. I will have to go in and set our region. So I'm going to set it in my area to the United States. So we've got that up and running, and it will then reboot the device here and bring us back to uh, the setup screen here once it does that. So why don't we let it reboot, and when it's done, we'll take a look at our next step. All right, now that it rebooted, we have one more thing to do, which is to set its LoRa preset. We're gonna go over to radio configuration on here. Again, this will look a little different on the iPhone. And we'll go to LoRa here. And inside of this, there's a preset setting for the modem configuration. And I have been setting mine to long fast. This looks like what most people are using with Meshtastic. And this is kind of like the channel that it uses. So it will find other uh, radios that are using that same preset. So that's what I set this one to. That does require another reboot. I did do that in a prior step. So now we're pretty much ready to go. And if I go over here to my node list, you can see that it's finding my other radio here along with a signal strength indicator. Now that other radio is right next to it, of course. It's right down here. And if we jump over to my iPhone, you can see that it too uh, sees the other radio. This one on the bottom is one that I keep in my car. I've been trying to see if I can pick up anything as I drive around. Uh, but this one is the uh, radio that we just configured. And of course, this one at the top is the radio that this iPhone is paired up with. Now let's maybe send a quick message here. So I'm gonna jump into our primary radio channel here, and I'm going to go and just say hello. So let me just type that in real quick. I'll say hello iPhone, I mean from iPhone, whatever, I'll just send it. And what'll happen here is that that message will get sent from this radio to this one, and then over Bluetooth, this radio will communicate with the phone uh, to let us know that there's a message that came in, and there it is, and I can say, hello uh, from Pixel. This is a Pixel phone. And we'll just then send the message back. And so what'll happen here is that the radios will communicate once more. And what's nice about this is that it does do a confirmation that the message was read. So there's a lot of communication that goes on between them. Now what you just saw was a channel communication which is kind of out in the public and anybody can communicate with anyone else, kind of like a big chat room. You can also do direct messages. So if we go back over to my iPhone here, there is the option for direct message, and I can select that other radio here and say uh, private, just to give it a test here, send that along, and what'll happen here is I will get a new uh, channel here that's starting up between this phone and that phone so I can have a one-to-one -one communication. Now, if you are not operating on the ham radio frequencies, you could use encryption for this discussion. So there are some things that you can do on Meshtastic that you can't do on amateur radio, but for the most part, this is kind of what you do on Meshtastic. You send messages back and forth. Now, if these radios were out of range of each other, but there was a radio in between that could see both of us, the system will actually hop from one to the other. So the message that I send will go to the intermediary node. That node will then repeat it and get it to its final destination. So that's really how this works. So to make this work in the best possible way, you need a lot of nodes between you and your friends so that everybody can communicate with everybody else. These are very low powered radios. These are not the 50 watts that I'm using for my APRS communications on my ham radio across the room here. And of course, uh, low power communications are very susceptible to things that are in between like terrain and buildings and everything else. So you want high antennas. You want to get as many of these nodes out there as possible so that you can get around some of those obstacles. And it's certainly a lot more uh, work to get this set up than you might need with some kind of ham radio setup. But still, I think it's really cool. It's come a long way in a short period of time. It's a very passionate 
open source movement around it. I have no doubt that when this video gets uploaded, there will be a lot of comments correcting things and pointing me in new directions. And I am very much looking forward to all of that because this is about the extent of what I've done with Meshtastic so far. But I did want to try it out given how many people have been telling me to try it. So I am pretty uh, happy with what I'm seeing so far. I just wish I had more people to talk to. Now there is a great website here called meshmap.net. And I think some of this functionality is built into the app as well. And so what you can do on here is pull up a map and see where there are nodes near you. And then you can also see how far those nodes reach. So for example, uh, this node here, I think this is the one I clicked on, uh, is actually reaching a very far area here. And so if you were within the coverage area of this particular node, you could have a lot of communications with people that can also see that node. But you can see others have a much smaller footprint here. So take a look at the map. And if you happen to be in an area where you've got a bunch of nodes nearby, you might have some fun with this and be able to find some other radio aficionados that are not far from you. And I have no doubt that if you happen to run into somebody on Meshtastic, they will be more than happy to get you what you need to further your Meshtastic journey. But let me show you some similar things that you can do on the amateur radio side that might pique your interest. We're going to start off with APRS. So what you're looking at here is a map of APRS signals that my radio has received since I started recording this video. So it hasn't been running all that long. The furthest one I've picked up here is off of Long Island, and I picked up a bunch of others that are closer to me. APRS stands for Automatic Packet Reporting System, and it uses actually a very old technology called packet radio that transmits little bursts of data at 1200 baud over the air. And the way APRS works actually is very similar to how Meshtastic works in that it does have repeaters and other things set up so that you can reach other users on the network even if you can't reach each other directly. So when I send out a packet, it gets repeated and picked up and repeated by other radios on the network here. It's really cool how it all works. So you can see my radio picked up a bunch of these on the map. I picked up a number of other stations here as well. Uh, we can go over to uh, this screen here. I'll just click refresh and we can see how far away I was heard. So it looks like I was able to get a signal out about 29 miles from the antenna on my roof and I'm powering that antenna with about 50 watts of power. So you can definitely uh, go further with a little bit more power and of course a beefier radio. I also want to show you here the raw packet data and you will see packets flowing in just every couple of seconds here, just constant. So there's certainly a lot of activity over APRS. And where I am in Connecticut, we have other packet radio activity also. There's a number of packet radio bulletin board systems that are still operating here too. So if you're into this kind of thing of transmitting data uh, over your local area via radio, amateur radio might be really fun to try. And you don't need a fancy license for this either. The entry level technician license will be enough to get you started. I'll also point you at the video I did recently of software defined radio because you can listen to packets without the need to get a license and you can use the very same software that amateur operators are using to transmit. So as long as you don't transmit anything, you're able to listen and see what packets are coming in your area. And in my emergency communications video, we did a demo with my friend Kyle, AA0Z, who lives just outside of St. Louis, Missouri. I'm in Connecticut. We were able to have a voice conversation. We also played around with some data communications. One of my favorite applications is called VARAC, and this will let you do long-range text messages, very similar to Meshtastic, but over much greater distances. So, for example, I just got this packet in a few minutes ago from somebody in Georgia shortly after I booted up the app. I sent out some beacons of my own and I have been heard over here in the Canary Islands, uh, just off the coast of Venezuela and over portions of the United States here. So you can really get far with an amateur radio license. And again, they're not all that hard to get. Now, a great way to get started on your license is to go to hamstudy.org. You start with the technician license and then work your way up. I am currently a general, which gets you access to a majority of the high frequency bands that can go really far. So I would suggest if you're really into this, get your general and that will give you pretty much the entire swath of spectrum to communicate, especially if you just intend on using data modes. Ham study is super easy to use. It really guides you through the whole process of learning how these questions are formatted and what the answers are and you just keep quizzing yourself through here until you get to a point where you have some aptitude. Now you can find testing sessions on here uh, just by typing in your zip code, 
but they also have remote sessions where you can just go in over a Zoom call and take your test that way. That's how I got my general license. So it's very easy to do. It only costs a couple of bucks. And once you get your license, you can greatly expand some of the digital communication you do over radio. So there you go. Cool stuff. There's a lot of great options out there. If you are looking to play around with radio, I think Meshtastic is a great start. But if you don't have a lot of people near you, you might want to try a ham radio license because I can guarantee you, you'll find a lot more people to talk to on there. That will do it for this one. Again, let me know what you thought in the comments section. I'm eager to dive into this Meshtastic stuff a little bit more. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.